Welcome back to Mystic Fix. I'm Julia Gordon Bramer. I'm very excited to speak today to author Edward Tick, whose latest book is Soul Medicine, Healing Through Dream Incubation, Visions, Oracles, and Pilgrimage. Wow, that is a lot. And uh, why don't you explain what that means first off, Ed? Sure. Thank you very much, Julia. So first of all, thank you for having me. And it's an honor to, to speak with you. My book, Soul Medicine, is my eighth book, my fifth nonfiction book. And I have been working in the ancient Greek tradition, studying mythology, theater, uh, philosophy, poetry, all of the humanities and uh, resources from ancient Greece, and using them in my healing practices for decades. Uh, the four means of healing that the title or the subtitle mentions, dream incubation, visions, oracles, and pilgrimage are all means of transformational healing that we can achieve through the Greek tradition and also through other tra uh, indigenous traditions and, and traditions in the ancient world. So it's not exclusively from the Greek tradition, but it is heavily from the drink, Greek tradition. And I've been working in this, I've been studying it my whole life. I've had mm -hmm. my own breakthrough healing experiences in this tradition, and I've been uh, not only studying it from, for the ancient testimony, but I take the ancient writings very seriously. People, that whether it's the myths or um, biblical stories or, uh, or histories or case studies, we have tons of evidence from traditional cultures worldwide and especially from the greek tradition that they had profound means for achieving transformational healing uh, through spiritual practice or holistic practice that includes spirituality that as you well know and testify to as well we've lost today and we're not using them so i use all of these methods uh, and dream incubation is not just about dreams it was the in ancient Greece, it was the term used in the, the healing sanctuaries of the god of healing, Asclepius. Uh, it, we can just we can share it with our listeners, but briefly, this is the origin of psycho psychology and medicine in the Western world. Right, and it uh, we have evidence that it began at it was already fully developed by 1400 BC. So, so 3,500 years ago, and it led directly to Hippocrates and to the development of scientific medicine that we so have. So what, what you're saying, I think, Ed, is that through through these dreams or whatever, we can have physical healing, right? Through, the, through dreams, through visions, through voyages. You're not just talking mental, emotional, because we, we have, we still honor the Greek tradition with the mental emotional stuff, you know, with all ever since Freud and, and all of these complexes that, that are named after after myth. And and there's so much wisdom in there that is still respected that way. But you're you're taking it to another level. You're saying that the physical body can be healed, right? Yeah, I am. And I'm taking it to another level. And thank you for that in several ways. One matter is Hippocrates so-called the father of scientific medicine or the father of modern medicine, he was the son and grandson of Asclepian priests. He grew mm -hmm. up in the temples learning how dreams can bring physical healing and holistic healing. He also, as and he studied those practices and he rendered them into scientific understanding and terminology, but he was continuing a tradition that had been going on for a thousand years before him. He said, way back, uh, and as healers, uh, some of us affirm this and uh, the healing, uh, generally healing medical and mental health is way behind this wisdom. Hippocrates said, so 2,400 years ago, all illnesses begin in the soul and end up in the body. Oh, wow. So it's not only, yes, dreams can bring physical healing. And yes, we have to have a completely different understanding of symptoms, symptomatology, and that symptoms are not just troubling uh, consequences of a physical illness to be suppressed or eradicated, which is what mostly modern medicine and modern psychiatry does. 
oh, mm-hmm. you've got troubling symptoms, take some medication. Take a pill. Right, yeah. take a pill and let's get rid of it and get you back to normative functioning. No. Holistic healing and spiritually based healing is not about getting back to normative functioning. It's about getting down into our cores, into our souls, mm-hmm. and what has wounded and disturbed our souls, and whether we're really living our authentic lives by what our soul wants and what spirit wants of us. So it's a physical sign, a symptom, an illness is a physical sign of something wrong within, is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are are you, I have this book right on my desk. Are you familiar with Louise Hay? Oh, and, sure. And yeah, yes, her technique. And by the way, I've met people in Greece who use her and love her uh-huh. books. Great. And yeah. It's very cool uh, talking with somebody who can't speak English, who's suddenly quoting Louise Hayes to us. <laughs> yeah. But it shows, um, you know, how this has uh, made it around the world and influences the way people think about their, their challenges. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a really quick example, I can give many, many examples, but yeah. uh, a man came in for therapy uh, with me because uh, he was in his 50s as a cardiologist, a very successful cardiologist. And he was in despair because he said, after all of my medical education and training and experience and a 30 year successful practice as a cardiologist, I finally realized and admit to myself, the heart isn't the problem with the heart. It's brokenheartedness, it's grief, it's despair, it's all of the feelings, the emotions people have had that they've stored in their hearts and stored in their bodies. And finally they have get heart disease and then they want me to operate on their heart and make it all better. Well, I can do that sometimes, sometimes they'll live, but that doesn't make them better, it doesn't change anything. So through therapy, with all due respect to this gentleman, through deep self-reflection, He gave up being a cardiologist and he went back into medical school to become a psychiatrist because he said, I want to treat the human heart and treating the human heart has to be through the heart and the mind and the soul, not just treating the body because the body is just registering the disappointments and the sorrows and the pains that we've accumulated over decades until we're making ourselves sick by not tending our hearts and souls. So, Ed, you have a history working with veterans, and, and you have a number of books about veterans and PTSD. And I, I imagine soul medicine is kind of, is it geared for them, or is it a much more universal audience then? It's definitely for a universal audience. And okay. I do take the same philosophy and strategy in working with veterans. Mm-hmm. So I redefine PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, as post-traumatic soul distress. The stress disorder points to broken brain, as psychology and medicine are saying. Broken brain, broken brain, broken brain. Yeah. yeah, our nervous system has changed, but what about the rest of us? Our bodies, our hearts, our value systems, uh, the way we relate, the way we love, the way we practice sexuality, our place in the society. All of those are profoundly changed and they're all matters of the soul. So uh, PTSD is post-traumatic soul distress and post-traumatic social disorder because it's the whole society that's in disorder and we are treating our veterans in a very neglectful and disordered and disabled way, expecting them to be sick and crazy. Right, right. Yeah, I was kind of thinking back on... um, uh, that old movie uh, came out in the eighties, I think. Born in the fourth on the fourth of July, and yep. and ha- how the the Vietnam vets came back, and we're going through sort of a similar thing. There there isn't the gratitude that uh, that there sh- have been for other wars, and right. yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of a rough time. Um, Let me share something about that with you. Yeah. Uh, okay, so pilgrimage it can be a form of healing. And I've led, by now I've led 23 healing journeys to Greece. I've also led 19 healing journeys to Vietnam. I, oh, take, wow. I take veterans back or their survivors, family members and friends, their loved ones. Uh, I take peace activists. I take people on spiritual journeys who want to immerse in the Buddhism there. Relevant to this, we would, ex- by Western medical and psychological standards, we would expect there to be epidemic levels of post-traumatic stress disorder in Vietnam. 
The war was there. We killed three million people. We destroyed their infrastructure. They should be crazy, according to the Western psychology. Nothing, oh. none, none. I've researched this all over the country, including in partnership with their psychologists. I've interviewed probably thousands of Vietnamese people. I, I have led 19 healing journeys over there. Mm-hmm. There's, all, there's no wartime PTSD there because they have all of the factors in place in their culture to heal it. And they give their veterans everything they need and everything that we neglect. Fascinating. Fascinating. Really? So, yeah. so Ed, in our last few minutes, um, what do you want readers to take away from soul medicine? What, you know, is, is there a practice or, or um, you know, methods that you are teaching them in this book? Yeah, well, there are many. So one is dream incubation, which is not just paying attention to your dreams, but giving yourself a, a, re, a dream retreat or a pilgrimage so that you Focus on your intentions. You go into deep isolation and through fasting and meditation and prayer time in isolation, uh, you look for what Jung called big dreams, not just the everyday dreams that talk about our daily lives or our unconscious, but big transformative dreams that actually bring healing or tell us how to heal themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's one matter. And this really was the beginning of medicine. And we have records of thousands of dreams from the ancient world like this that brought healing. And the Jungians learned their methodology in part from studying this older, uh, much older tradition. So one matter is uh, really taking your dreams seriously and looking for big dreams. But beyond that, visions and oracles uh, and synchronistic events, I record very many of them from the ancient world and that travelers have now. And my point here is that we can not only through standardized hour by hour counseling or therapy, but through spiritual journeys, through pilgrimage, through cultural immersion, we can uh, engender and awaken non-normative experiences for ourselves. We can have visions Mm. uh, and we can hear or receive oracles uh, without drugs. Right. So many people are are turning to the the psychedelics now, and I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not commenting on that whether that's good or bad. It's yeah, be very careful how it's used. It certainly engenders access to uh, spiritual realms, and people mm-hmm. are really hungry for that. Well, my big one big point here is that sure, you're right. Everybody who is hungry for genuine spiritual experience that heals and transforms us and shows us our purpose. And those experiences are available and we can get them without drugs. We can get them through dream work, through travel and pilgrimage, through um, theater, through the arts, through other forms of, of spiritual practice. Yeah. And, so uh, and those you can- take people on pilgrimages then? You, do you organize these things and, oh, yes, and go yes. on trips? I've led, to, I've led 23 pilgrimages to Greece. I'm going oh, wow. again in the fall. I'm going again next spring. I want to go. <laughs> I'd love to have you and share this wow. with you. Very much at home. And I've also led 19 pilgrimages to Vietnam. So that's like 42 pilgrimages and it's uh, one or two a year for the last 40 years, except during the pandemic when we couldn't travel. Yeah. And well, I love it. And I have extensive field notes and notebooks. And there's lots and lots of stories in my books of the, uh, from the people who have traveled with me and had these life transforming experiences. Yeah. Well, I am so excited to dive into soul medicine. Um, Edward Tick, how can people reach you if they want to connect? Uh, thank you. Well, I have two websites, and one is simply edwardtick.com, and that's my author's website for my books uh, and other publications. And then uh, my website for all of my work is mentor, the, as one word, mentorthesoul.guide. Shall I give my email address? Is simply oh, Dr. Absolutely. Ed- absolutely. Dr. Ed- Take at gmail.com. D R E D T I C K. Yeah. Thank you, Ed. It was a pleasure and uh, look forward to your book. Thank you so much. And thank you, Dr. Edward Tick. Stay with us for the next segment of Mystic Fix when we will be reading some tarot cards. <laughs> 